Are you tired of the FIA banning everything left, right and centre? Well, you're not alone. In fact, I've compiled a list of some of the most genius and innovative ideas that were shut down by the gods of F1 for your viewing pleasure. From rocket fuel to six-wheeled cars, these inventions were too hot to handle for the powers that be. And maybe even the cars at the time. Now then, let's talk about Renault's mass damper. The solution that started a development war and the FIA stepping in. Because who doesn't love a good old illegal dogfight between chronically insecure constructors? So here's the thing. Renault had to run an excessive amount of front spring stiffness to keep the front wing close to the ground. But that caused an unwanted bounce effect when the car was in pitch. So Renault's engineers thought, what to do? What to do? Well, why not slap on a free-moving weight suspended within a cylinder inside the nose cone that would act in opposition to the vertical forces applied to the car? Genius, right? And sure, the mass damper added weight to the car, which is not ideal. But they didn't particularly care about that because they were gaining lap time by the bucket loads. In the world of F1, every single tenth counts. Renault even customized the weight for each circuit. Because why have a one-size-fits-all solution when you can have a tailored one? And let's not forget that Renault was supplied with Michelin, which conveniently was more receptive to the use of the mass damper. Talk about luck, am I right? Of course, other teams weren't going to let Renault have all the fun, so they quickly followed suit. And soon enough, everyone was using them to varying degrees of success, much to the chagrin of a certain governing body. So, of course, the FIA had to step in and outlaw movable aerodynamic devices because it was getting out of hand. Who would have thought that exploiting a loophole in the rules could lead to an escalation in the development of cheating devices? I, for one, was shocked that people would do whatever it took to win in the cutthroat world of Formula One. One thing, though, is for sure. It wasn't as much of a cheat code as the next innovation on the list. Traction control was the electronic babysitter for drivers who couldn't handle a little wheel spin. It's a staple of modern road cars, but the F1 gods decided it was too easy for rich teams and banned it in the end of the 1993 season. The rulemakers wanted to make driving more challenging and give the underdogs a fighting chance. How Robin Hood-esque of an organization notorious for jumping at money. But wouldn't you know, the banned technology had its biggest momentum in F1 while it was, well, banned. The Benetton team was accused of using traction control in 1994, which prompted an investigation by the FIA. They found some suspicious software in the car's computers, but couldn't prove that the team had actually used it to cheat. Michael Schumacher went on to win the championship that year, and the traction control scandal lived on. The FIA eventually gave up trying to police the traction control ban and allowed it back in 2001. They then banned it again in 2008, but only because they had a new toy to play with. A standardized electronic control unit that prevented teams from using their own sneaky software. Speaking of new toys, the next invention on the list was just so… obvious and yet genius that even the powers that be were unsure if it was illegal or not. All of the technologies that have been banned by the F1's governing body over the years, McLaren's rear brake pedal stands out as one of the most controversial. Many asked how such an ingenious system, which merely added a new way of operating the car's existing braking systems, could ever be considered illegal. It was banned early in 1998, just as McLaren was beginning to dominate the season. Following a protest by Ferrari, the system, which had previously been declared legal L -E -G -A -L, by Charlie Whiting, was outlawed. Many at the time suggested that political motives were at work and a desire to keep McLaren from getting too far ahead. I mean, political games are unheard of in F1. But alas, the stewards at the Brazilian Grand Prix ruled against the rear brake pedal on the grounds that it was primarily a steering system. But hey, it didn't stop McLaren from running away with the Brazilian Grand Prix anyway or from winning both championships that year. So I guess it wasn't all that bad. Except for poor Ron Dennis, who must have been furious to see his innovative system exposed after such a short time in service. Now, McLaren's rear brake was a pretty simple innovation, turned cheat code. But this next one from Williams was genuinely revolutionary. Too revolutionary. 
Ah, active suspension. A technology so advanced, so sophisticated, it's simply too good for Formula One. Yeah, no. Even normal production cars use it, which really makes you wonder what the governing bodies were playing at most of the time. Lotus may have had a go at it in the early 1980s with a computer-controlled hydraulic suspension system, but let's be real, we all know Williams is the name most associated with the tech in F1. The FW14B and the FW15C made the cars dance around like ballerinas, with the technicians testing suspension components and drivers trusting that the system knew best what could possibly be wrong with that? Well, as it turns out, a lot. Other teams were just jealous of William's success, and the powers that be decided to clamp down on all that innovation. Critics whined that the active suspension made cars too easy to drive and that poorer teams wouldn't be able to afford it. And so, in their infinite wisdom, F1 banned active suspension, along with most electronic driver aids, at the end of the 1993 season. You know, I have a theory that all governing bodies in the F1 are right-wing, with how much they like banning everything. You know, some of these innovations are so subtle and genius, like a gentle melody on a flute. But this next one, it's like a heavy metal band in musical terms. Brabham, a British F1 team, really took the concept of downforce to the extreme with its BT46B back in 1978. You see, designer Gordon Murray, who later went on to design the McLaren F1 supercar, no big deal, added a fan to the car that sucked air out from underneath it through the engine bay, creating a low-pressure zone that stuck the car to the track like glue. Anyway, the Brabham BT46B debuted at the 1978 Swedish Grand Prix, and Niki Lauda drove it to victory after qualifying third. But that's not even the best part. Murray had exploited a legal loophole by claiming the fan was for engine cooling. Now that's a sneaky little devil right there. You know what else is a sneaky little devil? You, because you haven't subscribed yet. So subscribe. Of course, other teams were furious and accused Brabham of cheating. But being the noble soul he is, Brabham boss Bernie Eccleston decided to retire the BT46B rather than get into a big fight over its legality. Who needs rules when you've got loopholes? Talking about loopholes though, this next one might be a little out there. Who needs four wheels when you can have six? That's what designer Derek Gardner thought when he created the Tyrell P34. Sure, the car only won one race in two seasons, but who cares about winning when you can make it into YouTube videos decades later? According to Gardner, the P34's four small front tires offered more grip, and maybe, just maybe, there was some aerodynamic advantage to having smaller wheels. March tried to copy the concept with a four-wheel rear car, but lacked the funding to finish it. Ferrari even thought about throwing four wheels on one axle, like a pickup truck because that's what F1 needs, more pickups. Williams built a six-wheeler prototype, the FW08B, in 1982, but the six-wheeled dream was short-lived when F1 banned them ahead of the 1983 season. Not surprised, it was simply too abrupt for the dinosaurs over there. Sometimes you look at your car and go, hey, maybe the fault isn't in the way we designed the car. Oh, I know, should we try rocket fuel? Renault may be boasting about their double championship success now, but they weren't always so lucky. They were once caught out by BMW's technical innovation that cost them their first championship. And what was this innovation, you ask? Oh, just a little something called an extra potent fuel that unleashed prodigious power from their turbo engines. Rumour has it that this special brew was derived from aviation fuel developed by the Nazis during World War II. Renault had originally introduced the turbo engine to Formula One in 1977, but other teams backed by major car manufacturers soon caught up. Having pioneered the invention, Renault perhaps felt it was their right to be the first team to win a championship with it, but they let a clear chance go by in 1982 when Alain Prost's bid for the title was ruined by the car's unreliability. Then, BMW had their breakthrough, thanks to their imaginative technicians who found a legal way to produce a superfuel that burned more rapidly and created more heat energy. 
Boost pressure skyrocketed to as high as 5.4 over the subsequent seasons, with little evidence of how much power these engines produced. But hey, the fuel only contained around 80% toluene and was poisonous and enormously expensive. No big deal, right? The FIA eventually had to ban turbos, but the Nazi link is just a good story. Or so they say. For BMW, it was definitely a pretty ugly situation with the press. Speaking of ugly, despite being broke and on the brink of selling out to British American Racing, the Tyrell Racing Team might just have managed to create the ugliest car in F1 history with the X-Wings. But who cares if they were grotesque? They were made out of old wings, so it was all about recycling, baby. So they went ahead and fixed some crude uprights and mini wings to the side pods to generate more downforce. And other teams followed suit, and even Ferrari was using them by the San Marino round. But of course, McLaren's Adrian Newey had too much taste to use them, and the FIA eventually banned them for being unsafe. Which, let's be real, was just a polite way of saying, too damn ugly. Now for a throwback that modern F1 fans will appreciate. Ah, the golden age of F1, when all you needed to win was a car with ground effect. This nifty trick, borrowed from aircraft design, involved sucking the car onto the track with minimal drag. And boy did it work. Teams like Lotus were quick to catch on using wing-shaped elements in side pods to direct air and sliding skirts to create low-pressure areas that sealed the car to the track surface. It was like magic, except without the rabbits and top hats. But all good things must come to an end. And so it was with ground effect. The fun police came in 1983, requiring all F1 cars to have flat floors and ending the ground effect era. Apparently, they were concerned about the higher cornering speeds and the possibility of a catastrophic loss of downforce if the underbody seal was broken. Boring. Who cares about safety when you can have speed and excitement? But hey, at least the drivers can still take cycles and scooters on track walks, right? Oh wait, they're gone too. Thanks a lot, rule makers. But you know what is gone but will forever live in our hearts? DAS. Ah, Mercedes and their short-lived innovation, the dual-axis steering DAS system. It was a stroke of genius, really, allowing the driver to adjust the toe of the front wheels with a simple pull or push of the steering wheel. Of course, it was all in the name of improving the front tire warm-up. Nothing to do with gaining an unfair advantage, no sir. The FIA eventually gave the green light for DAS, but only if activated by the steering wheel. Makes sense, right? Even though Red Bull protested the system, their complaint was dismissed. But alas, the joy was short-lived. DAS was just too expensive for other teams to develop and implement, so they banned it for the 2021 season. So now, Mercedes can proudly say they were the only team to ever use DAS. A unique achievement, indeed. Though one might wonder if it was worth all the effort for just one year of use. The engineers in F1 are some of the best in the world, and well, they should be, considering the sport is the pinnacle of engineering, and sometimes they throw up some of the most bizarre yet incredible innovations that really make you go, what the hell were they thinking? So let me know which innovation you think shouldn't have been outlawed. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more of the same. Also, make sure to watch my last video on the day F1 changed forever. And no, it's probably not what you're thinking, so click now to find out.